welcome everyone. When looking at today's passage, I had a mix of emotions. Here we have Paul writing to Timothy as an apostle of Christ to both encourage him and guide him through his ministry. We know that Timothy was young and shy and blighted by stomach problems, and we can relate to his humanity. His weaknesses are visible to us. It's clear, however, that leaders need nurture and discernment. They need to be fair, impartial, appreciative, cautious and discerning. In light of this, it's difficult to process when acts of violence and abuse are disclosed, particularly within the church. On the 6th of October 2020, the overarching report from the Independent Inquiry into Child Sexual Abuse in the Anglican Church in England and Wales was published. Archbishop Justin Wellesby notes in response. The report published today is a stark and shocking reminder of how so many times we have failed and continue to fail survivors. Apologies are vital, but they are not enough. We have to listen, we have to learn, and we have to act. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verses 17 to 25 The elders who direct the affairs of the church well are worthy of double honour, especially those whose work is preaching and teaching. For scripture says, do not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain, and the worker deserves his wages. Do not entertain an accusation against an elder unless it is brought by two or three witnesses. But those elders who are sinning you are to reprove before everyone, so that the others may take warning. I charge you in the sight of God and Christ Jesus and the elect angels to keep these instructions without partiality and to do nothing out of favouritism. Do not be hasty in the laying on of hands, and do not share in the sins of others. Keep yourself pure. Stop drinking only water, and use a little wine because of your stomach and your frequent illnesses. The sins of some are obvious, reaching the place of judgment ahead of them. The sins of others trail behind them. In the same way, good deeds are obvious, and even those that are not obvious cannot remain hidden forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Some have called this type of discernment the iceberg principle. That's the idea of nine-tenths of a person can be hidden from view. Timothy here is being instructed to give himself time, time to form an accurate assessment of people's character to discern between the seen and unseen, the surface and the depth, the appearance and the reality. The passage highlights the complexities involved in selecting suitable candidates for God's work, which is especially true for those in leadership positions. A distinction is drawn between those whose sins are clearly evident and those whose sins are not immediately apparent. In response to the recent report, Archbishop Justin Wellesby also said this, To fail on safeguarding casts a profound stain across every good thing that we do. I have said this before and I continue to stand by it, but I am acutely aware as we come towards the end of this year that while there is genuine commitment for the safeguarding of children and vulnerable adults, to be the highest priority of all parts of the church, it is evident we have still not got it right. And from the Bishop of Huddersfield, Jonathan Gibbs, the Church of England's lead safeguarding bishop, and Melissa Caslake, the Church's National Director of Safeguarding. We today want to express our shame about the events that have made those apologies necessary. The whole church must learn lessons from this inquiry. We thank God that he is all-knowing. Hebrews chapter 4 tells us, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, 
piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. In working together, we have the opportunity to learn and grow and encourage the biblical principles that Paul outlines to us. To be fair, impartial, appreciative, cautious and discerning. And where these good works are, conspicuous or concealed, they will come to light and God's name will be protected from dishonour. Mistakes will be avoided and the church will be preserved in peace and love. Let us pray. Loving God, we pray that your church may be a place of welcome, security and compassion. Keep us watchful yet caring, trusting yet ready to question, that all who worship here may do so in safety and in the knowledge of your love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.